hello friends and welcome to my channel so today we are going to start with this uh, general steps in a finite element analysis so we will see uh, one by one what are the steps in a finite element analysis so basically there are eight steps in this finite element analysis so we will start with the step one step one is a discretization in this discretization we will get some problem so any problem uh, which is structural may be or another put into a finite element model so finite element model means it's a combination of these nodes and the elements so these nodes and elements uh, formation is called as a meshing in finite element analysis so we can convert according to the problem if it is a 1d problem we can convert it into a link element we can use a triangular or quadrilateral if the problem is 2d if it is a 3d or solid we will use tetrahedron and hexahedron so we have to assign uh, this is total nodes and the elements in the system for example here we have uh, defined this structure into finite element model so we can give assign the number from here 1 2 3 4 likewise we will give the element numbers according to that we will give a uh, node numbers so these are the node numbers and then next step is to define the boundary condition here we have some fixed supports and roller supports so accordingly for particular nodes we are going to give these supports as this is uh, displacement is zero this displacement is a zero and force is applied on these nodes so we will convert this structural problem or any other problem into a finite element model so this is the discretization is the first step second step is identifying the primary unknowns so what is mean by primary unknowns so we will get uh, first unknown that is displacement in the structural analysis means if we do the structural analysis for stress we have to find out the displacement first then we will uh, see heat conduction analysis in this analysis we need to find out the element temperature so this is the basic unknowns so which are called as a primary unknowns in cfd analysis we have to know about element velocities then we can find out different uh, unknowns which is required in this analysis for example here it is a displacement so primary unknown is a displacement so secondary unknown becomes a stress and the strain so stress and strain can be found out using this stress strain relationship or stress uh, uh, displacement relationships so these relationships are coming from the theory of the elasticity if we know the primary unknown temperature then we can find out the heat flux and the heat flow by using some relations so those are called as a secondary unknowns and these are called as a primary unknowns so identify which is the primary unknown in your problem and then start so next step is our third step selection of a proper interpolation function interpolation function are also called as a shape functions so we in this problem if we define this problem with the help of these elements so we need to define a proper shape function for these elements suppose the elements are simplex element we will use simple linear polynomials or interpolation functions if it is complex then we will use quadratic shape functions if it is multiplex elements we will use cubic shape functions so explanation about simplex complex and multiplex elements uh, you can find out uh, here by clicking the uh, i icon here okay so interpolation function defines the shape functions because we will getting the values at the nodes so intermediate values in between the elements we will get using these shape functions so that's why shape functions are more important to get the accurate results because nodal values are may not be uh, accurate as far as uh, if we solve the linear ways so we need more complex and multiplex elements and quadratic and cubic shape functions next step 
is the derivation of element equation means we have to define each element with its equation means how many elements are there that much equations are to be formed these are the equation force vector is equal to stiffness of the element and multiplied by displacement vector so there are two methods mostly used relay reads method and galakin method so this method used some some where stress analysis is required so we use minimum potential energy approach in relay reads method and suppose for problems we use a galakin method so for each element we will get this force is equal to stiffness into displacement and then next step is step 5 derive overall stiffness equation means if there is a n number of equation uh, elements we will get n number of equations for each element and this n number of equations we need to add together to get a global stiffness of that system and force are added accordingly we will get the force vector displacement are added accordingly we will get displacement vector to form this global stiffness matrix each element is connected to the next element with some nodes according to that we will connect these all elements together to form this global stiffness matrix so this stiffness matrix gives you the full stiffness of this your problem Now once we get whole system equation that is force is equal to stiffness into displacement. So we have to solve these system equation to get the primary unknowns from this overall stiffness. So there are many methods we can solve this uh, uh, to find out this Q value. Q is a primary unknown. So we can simply take this stiffness matrix to other side make a K inverse and multiply by its force vector. So we will get directly the displacements or we can use Gauss elimination method. What happens in Gauss elimination method? We have to convert this uh, stiffness matrix into upper triangular matrix and one by one we can, if we multiply last value of this displacement we will get the exact, uh, exact value for this uh, last displacement. So likewise we can solve this uh, equation simultaneously we will get all these primary unknowns and we can use again relations to get the secondary unknown. This is the step, step number 6. Step number 7 that is to get the secondary unknowns. Once we got all displacement here, we, uh, we have uh, displacement vector. So if we want to find out the strain that is epsilon, we will use strain displacement relationship. So strain displacement relationship comes from the theory of elasticity. We can derive these relations and we, if we put the value of displacement in that equation, we will easily get the strain in each element. So if we want to find out the stress in the element, there is a relation stress strain relationship. So stress strain relation derived from this Hooke's law. It is applicable for 1D, 2D and 3D. So we, if we know the strain, we can find out the stresses in the each element. Now if we find out the uh, at the middle of these elements or somewhere inside the element, so we can use the interpolation function that is shape function to find out the stress inside the element. Okay. And the last step is Step number eight, display and the interpretation of the reasons. So once we done with the finding out the primary unknowns and the secondary unknowns, we have to collect the data, result data. There is a two methods that is a tabular data method. Second one is a graphical display method. So in tabular data, what happens? We can uh, prepare a table accordingly. So in that there will be stress, there will be element or strain or any positions their stresses strains so we can give the tabular data by using this tabular data we can prepare a graph on x-axis and y-axis 
or any other method we can use for graphical representation. So it comes in the tabular data and the next is visual display. Visual display means we use the graphics like uh, suppose this is a plate which you, which is stressed so we will get maximum displacement here minimum displacement on this side so we will get the static with the contours and we, we, we can play the animations animations means how minimum to the maximum value is to be uh, changing from minimum to maximum or maximum to minimum we will get the animation we can save that in the form of video and we can show in the presentation in that we can uh, explain about how the load is going to vary how the one minus stresses are going to vary then and then we will get the we will get to the conclusion about the finite element analysis or finite element method of this total problem so basically it has eight steps and it is explained here so thank you so much guys please subscribe for more videos thank you